So hello and, and welcome to the Zero Project 2018 uh, nominations webinar. Okay, so my name is Pete and I will be co-hosting uh, today with my colleague Wilfred. Hello. I'm just about to share my screen and then we can begin going through the presentation. To begin with some technical instructions, you can ask a question at any time by using the chat function, but could I ask everyone to switch off their microphones on your PCs to just to prevent some of the background noise? If there are any delays, for example, if you if you wait a couple of seconds for a screen to appear, just bear with us and bear with the technology. Sometimes it takes a little little longer. And if you're having any problems with the technology, please let us know on the chat function. And also you have the option to turn your camera on or off if, if you wish. I should also say this session is being recorded so we can make it available uh, afterwards if you want to uh, go over anything that we've talked about. So the running order. Firstly, we're going to take you through the 2018 topics. So obviously, it, this year it's accessibility, but we're going to delve into each of the different areas of accessibility a little bit deeper. Then we're going to go through making an application. So we're going to take you through from start to finish, um, from finding the link, from entering information to clicking and submitting your application. And then we're going to take you through some tips and some frequently asked questions. And also throughout, we'll try and answer your questions in the chat function. So I should mention again, if you've got any questions on anything that we're, we're talking about or anything on the screen, please just uh, use the chat function. So I'll hand over to my colleague Wilfred now, who will take you through the topics of accessibility. Thank you, Pete. Uh, good afternoon. As you know, we're looking for nominations on accessibility and uh, we are looking for innovative practices and innovative policies. What is an innovative practice? An innovative practice is a product or service that improves the accessibility for people with disabilities. And an, in an innovative policy sets the legal framework through a law, a standard, or develops programs and actions plans regarding the accessibility to improve the lives of people with accessibility. So we have these two categories, innovative practices and innovative policies, where we are looking for nominations. So let us dive a little bit into the topic of accessibility. As you know, in the chapter uh, for uh, the rights of people with disabilities, there are defined four subgroups of accessibility. The, one, the first one is called built environment, and it deals with planning and construction of all sorts, mostly uh, of public buildings and, uh, and, uh, and public infrastructure. Basic elements include the entrances, orientation systems, information systems, but also practical things like restrooms, bathroom, and so forth. The second uh, topic is infrastructure. So here we talk about trains, about buses, uh, about long distance travel, about short distance travel. We talk about public utilities. How accessible is the utility, the utility bill? for people with, with disabilities. What have companies developed? How are they reacting uh, to the needs of this particular market? And we're also covering the topic of building and designing equipment, orientation and information system, as well as devices, apps and software. The third topic uh, defined is called information, communication and technology. It's all form of telecommunication. So it's speech, it's text messaging, it's social media, it's the internet and data. It's access to data and filing. It's automated and half automated. Te uh, teach to speak, speech to text, text to sign language, and easy to read language. So this is all uh, very particular things for the people uh, with disabilities. We also look for proposals for devices like smartphones, notebooks, tablets, wearables, accessible screen readers, and so on. And the fourth topic defined in the convention is general products and services. So any product and service you can imagine which has to make 
uh, accessible, which has to be made accessible for people uh, with disabilities, including purchasing and delivery, inc including product information, uh, billing processes, and so forth. And under this uh, point, we'll also cover assistive technologies and services will be considered. On top of these four main topics, we have developed five other themes uh, which we want to cover with this call for nominations. The first one is called urban development. This is everything that takes cities and public spaces more accessible. So urban planners usually work together or hopefully work together with stakeholders to create a new accessible environment, not only the living environment but, the, but also public utilities the shopping, the transportation facilities. So everything is covered under this aspect here. Tourism. People with disability also want to travel and we are looking for solutions from leaving the home until reaching the final destination. So this is the transportation to and from the home to the train station or the airport. It is the travel itself. How you, can you get uh, good access to the train? How will I be seated? Uh, on an aircraft, who is awaiting me on my point of destination, who brings me uh, to the hotel or the place I want to spend uh, the next couple of days of my holidays with. So these are all of these aspects we are looking for different solutions. The point number three uh, is museum and arts. People with disabilities have also uh, to cover their cultural needs, but no, not only visual arts, but opera, theater, literature. So what kind of accessibility solutions are there in the market? What have people thought if they run a museum, a theater, or an opera house? A very important point is also the emergency and disaster recovery. As you know, there are certain emergency plans, but what's happening with people with disabilities in case of emergencies? Who is going to evacuate them? How is the plan? What to do with wheelchair users? How to treat uh, people with visual or hearing impairments. So all of these natural or, or also man-made situations of emergencies and disaster relief, we're looking for nominations. And the last topic is workplace adaption, how to make it possible that people with disability can go to their place, uh, to their workplace, uh, what physical barriers have to be removed, how are they uh, integrated and are able to perform their task. We are also looking for, in this context, for universal design principles and also the application of platforms, networks, and consultancy services. So these are the nine topics we are looking for nominations. And again, we are looking for innovative policies and innovative practices in this field. Pete. Okay. Thank you, Wilfred. Um, so the next part of the presentation, we're going to take you through actually making a nomination. So the best place to find the link to get to our nominations page is by going to the Zero Project homepage, which you can find at www.zeroproject.org. And then you'll notice at the bottom of the page, there's a big green button, which if you click on, that will take you directly to the nomination site. So the first thing you need to do once you get there is choose your language. So you can do that by clicking on any of the, the flags. Now, the next thing you need to do is click on, so if you don't have an account already, you must click on do not have an account. And then if you fill in your details, you'll automatically be sent an email which will have your username and your password. So if you open up the email and then return to the site and fill in your, your login details, and at this point, you should also just double check that the correct language is still selected because once you enter at this point, it will stay in that language until you log back out again. So once you're logged in, it'll take you to the uh, introduction page, which gives you a little bit of information about, the, about making a nomination this year. And you'll see that there is links to, uh, to two documents and also the inform me about webinars. So the, fir the first two documents, um, I'd recommend to have a look at these before you begin an application. And you can also open them up. That you can get them in, in Word format if you follow the link. 
and you can also have a look at these while you know throughout the whole application so the first one is themes of accessibility so that's similar to what Wilfred has gone over already but goes into a little bit more depth and that basically goes through all the different topics um, within accessibility that we're accepting applications on then also alongside that you'll see there is a question and answers document um, again so you can open this up and the, all these documents are available in all the application languages and the question and answers tells you a little bit more information about exactly how to make an application so once you've read that information then you can go back to the uh, nominations page and you can click on a green button which should be at the bottom of the page which says start filling in a practice or policy so you need to enter your title so that will be the title of the, the, the project or the service um, or the law or the, uh, the tax and then next you need to click the category and this is a really crucial point because once you've selected either a practice or a policy then this will determine what the questions will be on the rest of the application form so again you may wish to refer back to the question and answers document which will give you a bit more information about what is a practice and what is a policy okay so then once you've selected then it will take you through to the um, to the project details screen and this is essentially the application so there's a number of areas here which you can edit um, and you can you can come back in and out and edit and change um, but we'll just we'll just go through on a quick run through so the first two boxes you have nominator and this this should already be set, be set up once you uh, once you first log into the site but you can edit it afterwards and the nominator is the person who is recommending this practice or policy. And then below that, you'll see contact person. And now this, this quite often in most cases is the same person. So it will be something, um, it will be somebody from an organization who is recommending their own practice or policy. Um, but it can in some cases be different. So the nominator could be an external person who just believes that the project or, or practice um, is, is, is an excellent thing that, that we should know about. So if, if in that case you, you are not within the organization, then for the contact person you must add somebody who is within the organization who we can get in touch with to find out more details about the, uh, about the product, product or practice or policy. So you can also in the contact person just click same as registration data and that will save you from filling out the rest of the information. Okay, and then the nomination data, you cannot ed edit that. That's already set because that basically, you, you, you've selected that already and it will set the rest of the questions. So then the next box is pro project information. And this is essentially where you write your full application. So we won't go through all of the questions in here because there's, there's quite a few and you can find more information by looking at the other documents. Um, but, I, but I'll just tell you a little bit about how, um, how this, this box works. So firstly, you may have tick boxes. If there's tick boxes, this means you can add, you can click uh, multiple entries. Um, you'll see to the left of the screen is a, an, eye, uh, an eye icon. And basically, if you click on this, it will show you more information about uh, the question that you're on, and it will also give you an example uh, of an answer to that question. Uh, you'll see beneath the boxes, it says characters left. So, uh, so for, for many of these boxes, the number of characters is limited. Um, and, and the reason for that is because we really want good, concise applications where you can easily understand them. So if you just type within that function, you'll see the characters counting down. This also does include spaces. If you copy and paste, it won't automatically um, count down until you start typing afterwards. But if you are going to copy and paste, please do check that all the information has been pasted because if it's over the limit, it will cut off the end of it and you may need to go back and rewrite it. So it's important during all of these boxes to be very clear and concise. Uh, our experts like nominations that they understand. 
So as I mentioned before, any parts uh, in the actual application, you can you can go in, you can edit, you can save, and come back later. So if you've entered information, you can go to the bottom of the screen and click on save. And hopefully you should get um, a, green, a green box which tells you that your information has been updated. And then also you can then come, uh, you can then, uh, come out of that box and then you're back into the application screen. And you can also save the full application as well. So you can go to the bottom and click save and continue later. And at this point, everything is saved. So then you can, once you've saved it, you can then go back to the home screen or you can even completely log out. And then when you come back in, the information will still be there. As you can see, you could, there's a, an area where you can upload files. So there's two ways where you can do this. You can, either, you can either click on Upload Files and navigate through your Explorer, or you can just drag and drop into that area. Um, we really um, recommend you to, to give plenty of photos and videos because they really help bring the story to life, especially for the people who make the decisions on these. Um, there's a maximum of five photos and two videos that you can upload, and a maximum size of each of eight megabytes. If you want to send us larger pictures or files, then please do so, but by a file hoster, and then provide the download link in the box uh, on the screen. If there's any gaps in your application, you'll be informed at, in the orange box at the bottom, and basically you won't be able to complete and submit your application until everything that is compulsory has been filled in. Once you've entered, all of the information, then you should get a green box appearing at the bottom of the screen. And then this green box will ask you to uh, read uh, and agree to our terms and conditions. So we recommend you have a look at the terms and conditions before clicking the box. And then if you're happy, submit your application. Once this is done, you will receive, um, we will receive your completed application and we will review it before confirming that your submission has been accepted. So we may, we may check that uh, the information in the boxes are complete uh, and that they make sense. Uh, and, and, and if they don't, if, if we feel like in one question you've been answering not quite to the point, then we will reopen it for you and ask you to resubmit uh, that box. And once we are happy with it, then we will confirm it on our system, and then you will receive an automatic confirmation email, which means that your application has been accepted uh, as a submission for the nominations this year. So I hope that all makes sense. Uh, and if you have any questions, then please do enter them in the chat function. Otherwise, I will now pass over to uh, Wilfred again, who will take you through some of the questions and some tips. All right, thank you. Uh, so frequently asked questions, who can nominate? Everyone, everyone can nominate, including self-nominations. Uh, in this case, we need the details of the, of the contact persons, but again, anyone and everyone can nominate. Remember the two categories, innovative practices and innovative policies. What happens after the nominations? As you know, we have the, the deadline on June 17th, so remember this is next Saturday, so please go ahead, spread the message and fill in your nominations. Uh, and then the Zero Project works on crowd intelligence, which means we have a network of roughly 3,500 people, experts in the field, who help us to evaluate. We have a multi-stage evaluation process, and the selection criteria uh, there are three main criteria. The first one is innovation. So we're looking for new uh, things in the market, new products, new services, new standards, new regulations. So it ought, this can also be, for example, if it's new for uh, a lowly developed country and it already exists in a high developed country, this is also innovation because it's innovative for this immediate context. Also extension or extension strategies can be innovative even if the solution have existed before, but innovation. So think about it. Is it new? Uh, how how new is it to the to the market and to to the community? 
The second criteria is impact. We want to have measurable results. So it really needs to improve the lives of people uh, with disabilities and we have to be very strict and very clear about this. So how, what kind of data are we looking for? You should document the size of the practice or policy and also its growth over the last years. So when it started, how big is it, how many people uh, are influenced by it, how has it been developed over the last three years. And then we're looking for beneficiaries, beneficiaries who have been profiting from the innovative practice or innovative policies which have improved their lives of, the, of accessibility. Give us numbers for the last three years, four years, five years in order to make it possible for us to judge the impact of the practice or policies you are submit, submitting. And the, the last one is called scalability. Scalability, what do we mean? We mean, can it be transferred? Can it be replicated? We don't want, although there are many great isola or uh, island solutions out there, we want innovative practices and innovative policies who can be taken into a new environment, into a new country, into a new community. So we're looking for scalability and transferability of the model. So these three criteria, innovation, impact, and scalability are the main selection criteria for us at the Zero Project and all the experts involved. So are there any limits regarding the size or duration of the organization? No, not directly, but of course, as we have this innovative uh, context, we are looking for new things. We are looking not for things which have been developed 10 or 15 years ago. So be careful that we really have recent developments there. Are there any restrictions in terms of legal background or profit orientation? No, not at all. We are happy from innovative practices or policies from NGOs as well as for-profit enterprises. How about nominations that support accessibility but not directly producing it? We also consider projects that collect, research or present, publish or communicate or sell innovations in accessibility using innovative approaches like IT platforms. Now some other words for policy because maybe the, 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 the distinction between practice and policies is not so clear to some of you. So what is an innovative policy? Again, it's a legal framework we said in the beginning, but what do we consider policy? For example, a law, an act, a regulation, a service, a provision program, a standard, a plan, a strategy, or maybe other forms. So it has to influence indirectly uh, the community of people with disability. What about the evaluation criteria for innovative policies? They are the same. So again, we judge the policies on innovation, impact, and scalability. Again, the network. Uh, so we are using this crowd intelligence of our network to help us evaluate your nominations. Uh, I talked about the 3,500 3, experts all over the world. They are representatives from the UN, from the European community, from NGOs, they are self-representatives, they are companies, persons and organizations familiar with the topic of lives of people with disabilities. Again, I said it's a multi-stage approach, so it will take us once the submissions are closed. It will take us all through the summer through a multi-stage evaluation process. And the finally selected innovative practices and policies will then come to Vienna uh, again in February of 2018. We will host the Zero Project Conference uh, at the UN headquarters in, uh, in Vienna. Uh, there will be roughly 550 uh, attendees from usually between 60 and 70 countries. And in a two and a half day uh, conference, it's a mixture of plenary uh, sessions and workshop sessions. We will talk about accessibility in general and these nine uh, subtopics uh, I have described before. So pencil in your calendar, Zero Project Conference, February of 2018.
So what are the next steps? Please respect the deadline. The next deadline is next Saturday. It's June 17th. Then we start with the evaluation process. And at the end of August, we will announce the shortlisted nominations. We will then work with the shortlisted nominations. We will ask questions. We want to really understand the practice and the policies. And we will start to document this. We will start to write fact sheets. And all these fact sheets and also life stories will then come into the, into the Zero Project report, will be, which will be presented during the Zero Project conference. So end of August, shortlisted nominations. Then we come back with more questions. We write the fact sheets. And then there will be another selection process. And the final selection will be then done during late fall. So we're looking ahead uh, to another almost six months of intensive work uh, together with you. But let's conclude the first step, namely uh, to hand in your nom nominations. Uh, I see you're using uh, the chat function. We will be live for another five to 10 minutes. You're more than welcome uh, to fire your questions. If you don't have time, you're, you want to consider, please write us an email at office at zeroproject.org. Uh, we are more than happy to help. Log into the website. There's also a help function there. Uh, don't be shy to ask if something is unclear and if you need more information. Pete? Okay, so I just wanted to say um, thank you um, and the best of luck with your nomination. Um, we, we haven't in previous years done webinars, so I'd really be keen to get some, some feedback um, as to what you what you thought of the webinar and, and if there's anything that you, you feel we missed or anything you'd want to do in future because we're, we're planning to do a second one before the uh, closure of the nominations process. But you can either give your feedback on the chat function or if you'd like to have a bit of a think about it, then please email us at office at zeroproject.org. Um, and yeah, as I say, uh, thank you for, for attending and I hope this has been useful for you.